Right, let's continue. Yeah, we were looking at uh, depreciation expenses. Yeah, okay, so you find that, uh, for example, let's say uh, the fixed assets yeah, purchased by a company uh, was uh, two million, yeah, uh, ringgit. Yeah, let's say uh, the asset was purchased uh, two years ago, okay, and the asset life is about four years. Yeah, so the expense of purchasing the asset this 2 million will be divided over the 4 years yeah roughly let's say we take straight line depreciation method yeah a simple method okay the cost of purchasing this 2 million dollar asset will be divided yeah into 4 years yeah therefore it is 500000 ringgit per year over the 4 years okay and this cost will be recognized as an expenditure uh, for the four years, yeah, each of the four years where the assets are used. Note that the asset was purchased long time ago. Yeah, let's say th this is in two thousand eighteen. Let's say part of the assets, uh, I mean the cost of purchasing the assets yeah, in depreciation, uh, is recognized here. But the the asset was actually purchased yeah about three years ago. Yeah, now this cost okay is recognized now even though the cost was incurred yeah, in, uh, let's say, three years ago. Why is that? Yeah? Because it's based on the principle of matching. Yeah? Because the assets, uh, which was bought three years ago, was used to generate the income or sales for this year. Yeah? This is based on the principle of matching. All right. Therefore, this depreciation allows you to do that. Yeah? Or the depreciation uh, arrangement here, allows you to apportion yeah, the cost of uh, fixed assets to the years in which the fixed assets were used to generate the revenue. Is that okay? So that is depreciation. Yeah? It has nothing to do actually with the uh, reduction yeah, in the value of the fixed assets. So you are simply apportioning the cost of purchasing the assets to the years in which you use the assets to generate revenue. Is that okay? That is what depreciation actually means. Yeah, it has nothing to do with uh, the reduction. Yeah, depreciation is normally or widely wrongly understood. Yeah, as the reduction in the value of the asset. Uh, actually, it is a reduction in the value of the book as uh, book value of the asset. Yeah, which is correct. Yeah, but it has nothing to do with the depreciation of the market value of the asset. Is that okay? So depreciation is actually a reduction in the book value of the fixed asset. That is true, yeah, because you when you depreciate, the accumulated depreciation is deducted from the book value of the asset, okay, to get the net, yeah, uh, value, yeah, which is the uh, new book value. All right. So depreciation could be understood as a reduction in the book value yeah? but it is not the reduction in the market value of the fixed assets yeah? so you must change that perception okay depreciation actually means the apportioning yeah, of the fixed uh, cost sorry yeah? the cost of purchasing fixed assets to the years in which you use the assets to generate sales yeah? based on the matching principle or the principle of matching is that okay so that is depreciation. Yeah. If you have any questions, you can post your comments. Yeah. Uh, at the bottom of the clip. Okay. You can add a comment. Okay. I'll look through the comments and uh, I will try and clarify if there are questions. Yeah. All right. Then when you deduct uh, revenue from the expenses, these two expenses here, one is the uh, variable cost plus fixed cost of production. Yeah. Or operations minus yeah this is another fixed cost but then this fixed cost is for uh, the purchase of fixed assets yeah all right so you minus that you get earnings before interest and tax yeah sometimes we call this ebit ebit yeah short for earnings before interest and tax yeah uh, ebit or uh, ebit so you take this minus that you minus this you get 694 million dollars yeah that was the earnings before interest and tax for 2018 yeah? for the year 2018 
After that, you minus interest. Yeah, not this. Yeah, these are all operating costs. Yeah, of course, you have another operating cost here. Tax is also an operating cost. Yeah, but this is the structure of the income statement. You minus the uh, revenue. You, you take revenue. You minus the operating costs here. Okay, then you minus the financing cost. Yeah, interest is actually a financial cost. Yeah, financing cost. Okay, you minus interest. This is based on uh, the interest based on the amount of loan that you have taken. Yeah, on the interest, uh, I mean on the loan, the interest on the loan. You minus that, then you get taxable income. Yeah, this is income which is taxable. That is why you call it taxable income, or sometimes called uh, earnings before tax. Yeah, here you have earnings before interest and tax. Here you will have earnings before tax, sometimes called EBT. Yeah. Then you minus taxes. Here the tax rate yeah, is 21%. Here we assume it's a flat rate. Yeah? In the US, it's rarely a flat rate. Okay, You have a progressive yeah, tax uh, tax schedule, meaning higher income is uh, taxed at a higher rate. Yeah? But here we assume that uh, only one rate applies yeah, for all uh, levels of income. So it's 21% here. Yeah? So this will be the taxable income after you minus uh, your interest. Yeah? 694 minus 70, you get 624 uh, million dollars. Then you minus 21% tax. And this amount of tax will be paid to the government. Yeah? Let's say this uh, includes yeah, federal and state taxes. Yeah? Okay, and therefore uh, the remainder will be your net income. Okay. So you have minus all expenses here, yeah? operating expenses as well as financial expenses. Operating expenses here, here including tax, okay, will be operating expenses minus the financing expenses here. Yeah? So this will be your net income. Net income is actually actually attributable to the shareholders, the owners yeah? of the company or business. Yeah? So from this earnings, yeah, or net earnings, yeah, sometimes we call this net earnings or earnings, net income. Okay, we have different words to refer to this, yeah. But here, always when you start, you don't call this earnings, yeah, you call this sales or revenue. After you have minus all the expenses, okay, then you call this earnings or net income, or sometimes called net profit, yeah. You can also call this profit, yeah. So different terms, yeah. All right, then from this earnings attributable these are all attributable to the shareholders because all the others have been paid yeah for example here uh, you would have uh, salaries yeah if you have direct cost here part of the cost of goods sold will be salaries paid to uh, the laborers yeah? the workers the factory workers who produce the goods okay so that will be part of the cost of goods sold yeah then you may have other expenses yeah here note that this income statement is uh, simplified Okay, you will have usually selling and administrative expenses, yeah, for example. So you will have some amount of uh, support staff salaries yeah, will be deducted there. So this, all these expenses are deducted, yeah, operating uh, and financial, yeah, financing expenses are all deducted. And then you have this, yeah, all the other stakeholders have been paid, therefore whatever that remains is attributable or it is the right of the shareholders. It belongs to the shareholders or the owners of the firm. Yeah? Right. Then, from this amount, the company can declare a certain amount as dividend. Yeah? So this dividend is usually less than the income. Yeah? Not always, but uh, typically, yeah? uh, by convention, usually the dividends will be less than the net income. Yeah? Okay. So the remaining portion Okay, will be addition to retain earnings. Yeah, that means $123 million will be paid as dividend. The remainder of that from this, okay, 493 minus 123, the remainder will be 370. This will be addition to retain earnings. Or you could call it uh, uh, retain earnings for the year 2018. Yeah? Okay, or yearly retain earnings. Yeah? So we call this addition to retain earnings or yearly retain earnings. Or... Uh, Sometimes just call retain earnings. Yeah, okay. This is the retain earnings income statement. Uh, this is different from the retain earnings in balance sheet. Yeah, in balance sheet, the retain earnings will be cumulative retain earnings. Is that okay? 
Right. So this will uh, constitute, yeah, all these will constitute the income statement. Strictly speaking, the income statement stops with the net income. Yeah? So this is called the bottom line. Yeah? Remember the uh, widely used term bottom line? Okay, bottom line refers to this, the net income. Okay. So these two items are additional items, yeah, which normally okay do not come under the income statement, yeah. But this is related to income statement, therefore these two are given here, yeah. These two elements or uh, pieces of information yeah, is given here. So note this, yeah, when you add these two, then you get net income, yeah. Net income, okay, is then divided divided, yeah, sorry, into dividends and retained earnings, yeah, addition to retained earnings. Alright, with that we finish the second key point, we move on to uh, the third key point, yeah, which is what is the difference between accounting income and cash flow, yeah? Okay, yeah, the first difference, there are two differences, yeah, major differences. The first difference is that accounting recognizes revenue when a sale or purchase takes place but may not mean collection of the sale or payment of the purchase. Yeah? So this is an important difference. Okay, cash flow means there must be a cash payment or a cash receipt. Okay, but accounting income, okay, recognizes revenue when a sale takes place. Yeah? That means when the sale is secured or when a purchase is made or when the purchase is secured. Yeah, when there is an agreement to buy, okay, that means the customer agrees to buy, they have already bought, they have the, the exchange of sale or, or the exchange of goods has taken place, yeah, then a sale has taken place. And here as well, purchase, when an exchange of uh, goods, yeah, raw material, the company or the firm receives from the supplier, okay, then a purchase has been made, yeah, as long as there is an agreement, okay, a sale or purchase can work both ways yeah but there's no exchange of money yet yeah there's exchange of goods but no exchange of money yeah in return okay because the money can be paid later yeah when you make a sale you can collect from your customers later likewise when you make a purchase you can uh, pay your suppliers later okay so this sale or purchase can take place uh, first but the payment okay the collection from sale or the payment of purchase may occur later. Okay, accounting income ba is based on when the sale is secured. Yeah, that means when there is an exchange of goods. Okay, or when there is a purchase, an exchange of goods. But cash flow is based on the exchange of payment. Yeah, when money changes hands. Yeah, from the supplier to the firm. Sorry, from the firm to the supplier or from the customer to the firm. Okay, so that's the difference here, yeah, which is more important for a financial manager. For financial management, accounting income is not important, yeah, because financial management is based uh, or the basis, uh, yeah, is based on or the focus is on the money, yeah, the, the transfer of money because we need money in order to make decisions, yeah. Remember the three decisions that we need to make this is based on the available cash, yeah available funds yeah therefore uh, the exchange of goods is not so important to finance yeah? it's the exchange of money that is uh, crucial yeah in order to make investment decisions financing decisions and day-to-day -day, yeah decisions okay i hope this is clear yeah? this is the first difference yeah? between accounting income and cash flow the second difference is that there is presence of non-cash expenses example depreciation yeah in computing accounting income, yeah, but this does not reflect cash flow. This is an important yeah, difference, a second important difference. For example, depreciation. I've explained that depreciation is actually a non-cash expense. Why is it non-cash? Because depreciation is actually the apportioning yeah, or division of the fixed cost, sorry, the uh, cost of fixed assets, yeah, purchase of fixed assets that is divided two different years in which the assets are used to generate income yeah therefore it's not a cash expense depreciation does not reflect the cash expense yeah but it is an expense in accounting terms so this is not uh, does not reflect cash outflow okay uh, 
uh, in accounting income okay it uh, reflects like an expense yeah or it is an expense but uh, it does not reflect